both want you to catch them all, but there's just not enough time. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're putting Nintendo and Game Freak's Pokemon Sister series against Hummel Bundle and Kromea's new MMO. It's Pokemon vs. Temtem. Can this underdog upset the reigning emperor for the last couple of decades? Well, let's take a look and find out. Round 1. World Over the last couple of decades, Pokémon has taken us to some beautiful environments. These areas aren't just a bunch of Pokémon and random buildings jumbled together either. Game Freak adds a sense of realism to Pokémon by basing regions off real-world locations. Kalos, for example, was inspired by Metropolitan France whereas the recent Gala region featured various locations designed after the United Kingdom. This isn't to say that Pokemon hasn't featured its own share of original landmarks though. Who else was astonished when they travelled to the Distortion World to capture Giratina? In retrospect, Pokemon has entranced us with its environments, and the regions are part of the reason why so many people get hyped for the newest instalment. While still new, Temtem has managed to capture our attention of its world in a different way. Players can expect to traverse tropical landscapes, explore treacherous caves, and even climb up colossal mountains. Temtem also has an upper hand against Pokémon thanks to its battlegrounds. As Pokémon continues to use empty fields and generic skyboxes to decorate the battlefield, Temtem showcases its fights with actual environments, sending up the ground with trees, bushes, rocks and more. Temtem's towns also bring a fantastical element to the game setting, by featuring locations hovering in the clouds, or featuring strange materials stuck in the ground. Oh yeah, did I also mention the game is set on a bunch of floating islands? That's pretty cool. We can appreciate the new flair Temtem has brought to the table, but Round 1 unfortunately has to go to Pokemon. The series has had plenty of time to establish itself and ingrain locations into our heads. Its battlefields may not be as decorative as well as Temtem's, but the realism flourishes with every game. Well, until recently with those damn trees, but that's besides the point. Winner! Pokemon! Round 2 Soundtrack Thanks to its lengthy history, Pokemon has acquired a massive library of fantastic music, and many songs can be recognized by even casual fans. Show of fans, how many people find themselves humming along the Pokemon Center's music? Dun 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 dun. How many times have you left a town only to re-enter so you can listen to the music again? Of course, it isn't enough to have good music while running around Pokemon's vibrant worlds. You need great battle music too, and Pokemon has plenty of these. The way the battle music is composed can really get your blood pumping, especially when you're on your 500th or something attempt to take down a gym leader. In other words, music makes it feel like the stakes are high and helps add tension to epic fights. Unfortunately, this is where Temtem kinda suffers. Don't get us wrong, Temtem has a solid soundtrack too, but some of it isn't as strong as it could be. The piece used for Tamer Battles provides more of a sense of exciting adventure rather than epic battle. Some of the instruments used also detract a bit of the tension. As nice as xylophones and lighter piano notes sound, they can't hold much of a candle to Pokemon. Harsh pianos and booming orchestras. The winner is clear here. While Temtem boasts enjoyable music to call its own, it's missing that feeling that Pokemon has managed to invoke for every game. The feeling that this battle could be the end, or just send you back to the last Pokemon Center you used. Winner, Pokemon. Round 3, 
battle system. Pokemon's battle system boils down to type matching, using certain moves to deal super effective damage to a Pokemon of the opposite type. Water beats fire, fire beats grass, and grass beats water, etc, etc. The only time that battle types get difficult to understand is when you start getting into Pokemon with dual types. That's when you have to study and remember who is weak to what. And also, I hate the fact that rock and ground are separate types. Those are annoying. However, Pokemon can be a real easy game to cheese. If you simply keep playing with the stronger types, you can spam whatever moves you're dealing the most damage to until your Pokemon runs out of power points for that move. In other words, there's absolutely no way to come back from a disadvantage unless your Pokemon is at a significantly higher level. It also doesn't help that the uh, super effective moves are often listed if you can count the same Pokemon. So thanks for that Game Freak. Nintendo's RPG Giant also follows the traditional RPG formula. Take turns attacking or building up your stats, XP is awarded at the end, and evolutions will happen after battle. It is easy to understand and doesn't deviate too much from the typical progression system you can find in other RPGs. Temtem, like Pokemon, features its own system of types, but with different names. Pokemon's Psychics are known as Mental, Fighting is known as Melee, and then you have unique types, like Digital and Crystal. While both games focus on type matching, there is one crucial difference between them. Temtem replaces Power Point with a Stamina Bar. Temtems have their own stamina bars that get drained after performing certain moves. If you overexert a Temtem stamina, they will lose some health. And so, you may have to skip a turn by resting in order to restore stamina. This prevents players from spamming the same move and has allowed Temtem's competitive scene to rely more on strategy rather than entirely on matchups. Another facet of Temtem's combat lies within its 2v2 structure. While Pokemon does have 2v2 matches, they are very situational, whereas for Temtem, every single battle is a 2v2. Some Temtems will acquire moves that can be enhanced if a partner Temtem is a certain type. Temtem also features a slightly different progression system, awarding XP whenever an enemy is defeated and allowing Temtems to evolve mid-battle. With this system, players can create different playstyles and come up with new ways to turn the tides of battle. As much as we enjoyed the simplistic nature of Pokemon, Temtem wins this round. There's more to think about than just type matching. You have to think of where you should use a move, when to rest, and how to make your turn effective. Temtem was specifically designed with competitive play in mind, and it shows. Pokemon relies too heavily on type matching, and that can be ruined when playing competitively. Winner, Temtem. Keep an eye on its competitive scene. Seriously. Round 4, Visuals. Just to give a quick clarification, this is not the same round as World. Here we are judging games on art style and technical prowess. And sadly, Pokemon has really dropped the ball on this one more than a few times. When it was a primarily handheld game, belting out titles in the Game Boy and DS systems, Pokemon had some strong visuals. Characters were well designed, Pokemon had slowly started to become more animated, and visual effects were getting more vibrant and colorful. It may have had a few hiccups with the occasional console releases like Battle Revolution, but they were forgivable. As of late though, time has not been kind to the Pokemon franchise, and part of that has stemmed from the inability to evolve with the gaming industry. So far, the art styles have gone through very little changes, and character animations have become alarmingly lazy. And also the wild area in the latest game, Sword and Shield, yeah, that area could definitely have used some visual work. As it stands, Temtem has become a much needed breath of fresh air for burned out Pokemon veterans. As if the bright art style wasn't enough, Temtem boasts more effort in its animations by showing attacks as they happen. There aren't glaring shortcuts being made, and you can enjoy the game at a smooth 60 frames per second. The game is still in early access on PC, but it will also be coming to all consoles, including the Switch later down the line. Mm -hmm. 
Temtem steals this round with ease. Pokemon's inability to improve its visuals has caused many fans to become flustered to the point where many have abandoned the franchise. Temtem is clearly making visuals a priority and is putting effort into animating its characters as well. Winner, Temtem. Round 5, Monsters. Okay, Temtem is at a real disadvantage of this round because it's still a new IP. Not a lot of people know about the different Temtems you can encounter. Although, just like Pokemon, you're definitely going to find one to call your favourite. For me, it's Platypal. Credit where credit is due. Many of the game's monsters are uniquely designed. Still, there are some times where you can't help but check the feeling we're playing a fan game. Mm -hmm. Of course, Pokemon has been around for so long that it's really hard to find someone who doesn't know Pikachu or Jigglypuff or even Meowth. And those are all first generation Pokemon. Part of the reason why people can remember the names of nearly 1,000 Pokemon is also because their names match their visual designs and personalities. Oh, its name is Coughing because he spits poison gas. His name is Seedot because he's a living seed. Honestly, we could be here all day discussing Pokemon names, but that's for another day. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Once again, the extensive history has allowed Pokemon to come out on top and thus winning this versus. Even if we were to just focus on Gen 1 Pokemon and current Temtem, Pokemon would still win this round. Temtem has some catching up to do. Winner, Pokemon. It wasn't easy choosing a winner, especially when considering the recent controversies with Pokemon. As you can see, Pokemon managed to squeeze the victory primarily because of its history. Temtem is still in early access and isn't planned for a full launch until 2021. However, and this is a very big however, if Pokemon doesn't make a course correction soon, Temtem may steal more fans away. So they really need to lift their game with what they've been doing lately. For now though, we gotta ask, did we choose the right victor? Debate it like civilized folk in the comments down below and subscribe to Watch Mojo for more thoughtful versus battles.